Hello, I'm Dr. Harold, once again the physics teacher. Needless to say, I'm going to be talking about the famous equation by Albert Einstein, E equals mc squared. It was so progressive that most scientists did not believe this could be possible at the time. So, I'm going to do a problem here, but first, let's talk about his famous equation. Now you notice I have BE here is equal to E is equal to MC squared. That's because BE represents binding energy. Now the energy to put together a nucleus of an atom, it, it releases energy because it goes to a state of lower energy. Now normally we think about how much energy is caused when an atom is split. Okay, but the reality is, is that when we put things into uh, a compound, for instance, they release energy because they go to a state of lower energy. And the same thing with a nuclei of an atom. When it's put together with the neutrons and the protons, an uh, energy state is achieved that is lower in energy. Now that amount of energy that takes uh, to pull it apart is also the same amount as that is released to put it together. So if we put it together and then we rip apart the nucleus, assuming all of the nucleus is ripped apart, all of the neutrons and protons are pulled apart, then this energy called binding energy is released, which is generally in joules, okay? It's the joules. Needless to say, if we take a particular element and give you the mass um, isotopes, of this element, such as beryllium-9, and 9 represents one of the isotopes. So we, we go ahead and give you the mass of that isotopes, which is 9.011121822 atomic mass units. Okay, Atomic mass units are not grams, and they're certainly not kilograms. This equation here, for simpler classes, must be converted into kilograms. But first, we can always, in any problem, handle it like it's one single atom. And the amount of mass difference between assembling it and tearing it apart, the mass defect, M, will be in atomic mass units, and it can be easily converted into kilograms. Okay, so if I start with this, I know that to figure out the amount of neutrons, I have 9 minus 4, I have 5 neutrons, and I'm going to symbolize that not in the nuclear physics manner, but as an N with a circle around it, and I have 4 protons. 4 protons because this is, after all, its atomic number. It's always the number of protons can't change the number of protons without changing who it is and what is the name of the element. So I've got this beryllium 9, it comes out to 9 here, and so if I take the mass of 5 neutrons, okay, which is 5 times 1.1 eight, six, seven atomic mass units, and I multiply it, I will get the mass of five neutrons. Four protons, I will take the mass of four protons, which are a little smaller. They're not as massive as a neutron. As we know, the, nu the nucleus is made of neutrons and protons, but actually the neutrons have a, have a negative charge and a positive charge, so they actually are made of a proton and a and an electron. So, four times <clears throat> and you can see that this in eight in the thousands column is larger than the seven in the, in the thousands column for protons. Once I get this total amount, I can subtract the actual mass of that nucleus.
what we've done here is I've multiplied the five neutrons at the mass of this large number here. This is the accepted value for the mass of one neutron. And we get 5.04335 atomic mass units. And four protons have to multiply four times the mass of one proton, which is 1.00787 atomic mass units. This is a total of 4.02910552 atomic mass units. I add them together. I get a total that it should have a mass of 9.0724552. Now, before they came together, this is the mass of the individual parts. And when you put them together to find a position that is of state of lower energy, like all things in nature try to do, energy is released. And this energy allows the position to be a state that's preferred, one of lower energy, one of, one of a greater entropy, not enthalpy. So I take that total, which it should be of the pieces and parts, and I subtract the mass that is given to me in the problem or that I look up on a periodic chart, and that the mass is 9.0121822, something smaller than the pieces and parts, protons and neutrons, to put it together. That leaves us with what is called a mass defect. of 0 0.06027332 atomic mass units. Now, it's a big number. I'm not rounding off on purpose, okay, uh, because it will throw the, there's such small increments of energy involved here with one single atom that we have to be careful, okay? So we don't want to round off too much. We can round off our final answer, if we like, to the proper amount of significant figures. But not until then. I've asked for two things. That is mass defect, and I've also asked for the total binding energy. Okay, once I have this, I need to convert this to kilograms. The way that I do that is I multiply this amount by 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27. Now what I did is I didn't put the other digits in here, but you do need to put those in there to get the most accurate reading of the transformation of atomic mass units into kilograms. This amount of kilograms is the amount of one atomic mass unit. So if I have 600 of an atomic mass unit, I need to multiply it by the conversion rate. Okay, The conversion rate to fill that in completely uh, is 053886 in the end, 1.66 and all these numbers. Okay, the answer to that comes out to 2, the mass defect in kilograms, times the speed of light squared. Well, we know that 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared makes it easy to change it to 3 squared, which is 9.0 and this is 
2 times 8 is 16, so I will put 9.0 e to the 16 here. And when I do the multiplication there, I get a total amount of 9.01 times 10 to the negative 12 joules. Joules are energy in almost everything I can think about. There are other conversions of energy, but joules is the, the SI unit that is accepted for the energy transformation. So once again, just to review the steps, you take the amount of neutrons and protons that is figured out from taking the isotopes, rounded off the nearest whole number, subtracting the protons, and that gives you the neutrons. You multiply it by the mass, the atomic mass units, of each proton and neutron. When you get that all together, you add it up, finding a particular amount. You subtract it from the actual mass of that nucleus, which has to be given to you. Okay? That is the mass defect, but it is in atomic mass units, and in our equation, we need it in kilograms. So basically, I multiply it by 1.66, 053886 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, because that's how much 1 AMU is, an atomic mass unit, and I get the total mass defect now changed into kilograms. So I put that in for mass. I put in the C squared. I can do 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second quantity squared if I wish. I just find it easier to do it this way, and I get the total amount in joules. Now, this is for one atom. So, if I had five atoms, I would multiply that number by five. If I had one mole, is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, I would multiply that number by Avogadro's number, so that I could get how many that large amount is. If I'm given a certain amount of, of kilograms of a substance, I need to figure out first how many atoms are in that amount of kilograms given. So if they give me uh, 5 times 10 squared kilograms, 500 kilograms, I know that that's more than just a few atoms. I would have to figure out how many atoms that is, and I know how much 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd uh, atoms uh, would be because it is the mass given on the atomic uh, periodic table. Thank you.